G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the Atharka Model 37 shotgun. I'm just gonna call this a pump-action shotgun because I don't know how you actually pronounce that. But looking at this thing, it does look quite similar to the pump-action shotgun that is in Fallout 76. Whether it's supposed to be that weapon, I'm not really sure. Anyways, we'll get into the attachments, and first off, we've got the receivers like always, with the advanced receiver doing 276 damage, so that's pretty good. And you can have a ported and shield barrel that'll increase your range and give you that little grill on top of your barrel like that, which actually looks really, really cool. And you get some sights. Standard sights are nothing, so that's kind of weird, but you can have iron sights, close sights, reflex side if you feel like it and also a scope which will be useful for attaching slugs to this thing we'll chuck a reflex side on for starters and then maybe for our one where we fire slugs we can make that thing a little bit more scoped anyways there's a bunch of muzzle attachments we could, which you can put on i wouldn't recommend putting on anything that but the suppressor because it's gonna bring down your range and if you're gonna go loud and proud um the recoil isn't too bad on this thing anyway so it's not like it's firing fast enough to make the recoil a problem, so leaving the muzzles as they are are fine. You can put a stocker with an ammo holder on this, that'll increase your reload speed. This is using the War Daddy animations, which um, reload 5 shells in regardless of how many shells you've fired. That reload animation is a good compromise between actual good reloading and not having a broken reload animation. Anyways, moving on to the zoom, you can make the zoom in a little bit if you feel like it. Since it's a shotgun, I feel like we don't have to have zoom on it. And you can make this thing fire different ammo, so buckshot and slug, and explosive variants of each. I'm going to get an explosive one with a suppressor just to see how that works, maybe with a scope along with that. I'm going to make it a sniper shotgun. Next up, you can change the looks of your weapon, you can make it a lot cleaner. Having a nice, well-maintained gun is probably a good idea for using in a post-apocalyptic wasteland where if your guns are shit, you're gonna get shot and killed. And you can change the fire mode of this thing. As standard, it is pump action, but you can make it slam fire, which is basically you fire as fast as you can pump this handle, which is actually kind of cool to see that in action when you work the thing. Um, you basically click as fast as you can and you, and you pump the shotgun like you wouldn't believe, but that'll increase your fire rate at the cost of damage. We're gonna leave this one just with the regular pump action animations, and you can attach a flashlight and a laser sight if you feel like it on either side of the weapon. Makes it look nice and tactical, I guess. And a legendary effect is there if you need it. I really don't need it. Also, according to this, you can craft a flashlight toggle that you can actually use to use the Pip-Boy light or this light, which is actually kind of neat. Okay, just to show off the lighting effects from this. So in the chemistry station under utility, you'll find this. Just hotkey that on whatever you've got and then you press the button when the weapon's out and you can change over. So right now I've got the Pip-Boy flashlight. It's all green and horrible. If I switch over to the shotgun's flashlight by hit touching the hotkey, you'll see that this light is now pointing from the shotgun and you can actually see that in third person if I move on to that and my weapon's pointing downwards, it'll actually point where the gun is pointing, which is kind of cool. It's only really usable if you've got the weapon pointing like that, but yeah, that's nice attention to detail and you also notice that there's a little bit of light on the end of the flashlight like that, so pretty good stuff. We're not going to be using this because I've got one of these to hold in my inventory instead, but it is a good feature nonetheless. Okay, welcome to a very blue Gunners Plaza. There's actually a storm going on outside this cell as we speak. But anyways, looking at this thing in third person, it looks alright. Aiming down sights. The dot is a little bit hard to see sometimes, but it's easy enough to sort of point at the middle of the screen. We've also got the laser sight there to help us out, so shouldn't affect accuracy too much. Taking a look at this thing in third person, looks alright. The animations line up quite well. And this is a one with a scope and a suppressor. This one will be firing the slugs. This one also has a scope and suppressor. We'll be using this one as the um, standard pump action. Hopefully that makes it semi-auto according to what the game thinks it is. And we'll be able to use the sniper perk with um, a, a shotgun. It's actually really good. You can knock people down very, very easily. And last but not least, we've got an explosive slug shooting one. This one hasn't got a suppressor, but it's got the glowing sights. That's what they look like. They're not really that usable, but you sort of a point at the middle of the screen, I guess. They work enough. Alrighty, let's get started on some gunners. First off, we'll just go ahead and sneak, peek around the corner, and get a sneak attack critical. No, okay, we'll get in a little bit close before we start. There we go, one-shot kill on that gunner with all of my sneak attack crit powers. But then, these gunners are tough. We're playing on very hard difficulty, so we're getting a half damage penalty. It also doesn't help when I miss my target, but still, it does a fairly good amount of damage. The problem with pump-action shotguns, and a lot of the mods that are, have pump-action shotguns, 
is that the animations, sure they look alright, but it also takes a lot of time to get those animations going to reload the gun as compared to a combat shotgun or firing the gun is pretty slow when compared to a combat shotgun so sometimes you've got vanilla weapons outperforming mod weapons which kind of sucks I do like it when my mod weapons do something better or differently than vanilla weapons otherwise I don't feel like they're worth downloading at all but this is not the case for this uh, particular shotgun oh looks like there's a little bit of base spread going on so it might be harder to snipe this than I thought there is a thing called bats we could use though, and that'll make it easy to hit targets at range indeed. So I guess we'll just use that with a uh, slug thrower, because the inherent inaccuracy is not very useful to me. Maybe if I engage at this sort of range, there we go. Good thing these are hit scan though. Man, I think this accuracy ought to be tweaked though, I guess. Because if I'm standing at point blank range, or not point blank range, but from here and I miss a shot, then I'm having a problem with this. So then the fact that she's moving out of the way, she can just stand there still and I'll completely miss. So I think maybe this might need to have a little bit of a look at just the base accuracy of this. But otherwise, so far, so good. We'll switch over to our explosive buckshot in a second. Just got to take out this guy first. See if we can't get a nice, almost 1k damage. If I had a hit her in the head, I would have got 1k easily. But still, that's pretty good damage. Alright, moving over to our buckshot of the explosive variety with a scope. Now, when you attach a scope, you've got the option of making the zoom better. Um, there we go, there's a sniper perk working for a shotgun. You'll find that it knocks people down very, very quickly and very, very frequently. It actually might be a good tactic to use on a You Only Live Once run. You hearing me, John? Just kidding, he doesn't watch my videos. And why would he? But anyways, knowing this, we can easily knock down Captain Bridget, although I'm noticing that none of our explosives, uh, projectiles, are explosive, and that is probably because it's been taken over by the suppressor. There might be some sort of projectile override that the suppressor does produce, so unfortunately, we don't get much of the benefit out of that. But still, we can easily knock down our enemies, and since we're hitting with so many projectiles, they hit the ground at an incredibly high speed. If they were, were to walk away from this fight, they'd have a nasty, um, what's it called, concussion, that's for sure. Also, yes, not touching the zoom on this will allow you to zoom in basically one time, which is useful for a shotgun that you want to use with a scope, because, oh, okay, nice. See, that's the kind of stuff you can do, just rag, ragdoll people and throw them up into the ceiling or whatever. It's good stuff. We'll switch over to our explosive slug now. Hopefully this one won't have the inaccuracies of the other one. Also, yes, this one is also slam fire. So I'll load this gun up and show you what that's about. It's a lot of DPS you can get out of that. A little bit inaccurate thanks to the slugs, but if you can get those shots on point, you can actually do quite a lot of damage. That's the stuff I'm looking for. So this thing looks like to, uh, it's increasing the pace of me killing here, so I guess explosive slugs are a good way to run this weapon. Just be sure to not to stand too close to the explosions or you will kill yourself very, very easily. I'm a little bit disappointed that you can't suppress the shotgun and use explosive buckshot at the same time. That kind of sucks. Maybe that's there for balance reasons, I'm not really sure. Regardless of that, this thing is working fine, so I guess I'm going to switch over to a more loud and proud um, shotgun sniper approach in the next clip, but still, this thing is definitely doing great work. Got that guy eventually. I like how the slugs went all around. I feel like these things should maybe have fins in them to stabilize the aims. Can they do that with shotgun slugs? I'm not really sure. Pretty sure frag rounds do it. That'd be cool. Maybe the explosive uh, slugs are supposed to be frag rounds. They were fun back in Battlefield. Let's move on to something else. Okay, so we're about to run the gauntlet. Gerald's already getting stuck into the gunners down at that little station there. Let's get started on these raiders. That raider's already booking it. Well, too bad for you. I've actually figured out how to get these explosive projectiles working, and yes, it was taking off the suppressor, which did it. Which would suggest that there's some sort of projectile override that happens when you put this with a um, suppressor, which is kind of strange for a shotgun. No, Gerald, not yet. Okay, since, we're de since you've decided to aggro onto me right now, there we go. We can actually make use out of the sniper perk there. 
for some reason this thing in its pump action form is still recognized in the game by as semi-auto so attaching a scope onto this is a good idea to um, just use that sniper perk to the fullest extent. I think we've warded off Gerald for now, so let's move on to the super mutants and we'll see what we can do. It's very orange today, I guess it's rare in the sunset. This is the kind of stuff that that Vogue EMB has that's really, really cool. Just cool lighting effects. I do like EMBs. I need to test out some more. I've been using this Vogue one for quite some time, which I do like, but it'd be cool to have something else to look at once in a while, I suppose. Um, if you only, if you know any cool AMBs that I need to check out, please let me know. I can't believe I can hit that guy all the way from over here. Unfortunately, this thing's range isn't high enough to retain that damage, and most of that damage is from the explosions, but uh, we'll go ahead and move up closer and make better use of that explosive damage. There we go. And, okay, it's time for Nerd Rage, so let's activate that by pressing pause and then unpausing the game, because for some reason, sometimes Nerd Rage doesn't activate. You can remind the game that it needs to just by pausing and unpausing the game. You're a little bit too close. I'm going to shoot you. Almost one shot at a Super Mutant Warlord like that. Almost. Knocked him down and then hit him with even more um, force to throw his ragdoll somewhere else. And he had a pretty nice send-off too. So, it's kind of nice using shotguns like this. I don't know whether Bethesda intended this whole thing to be a thing. Unfortunately, there's no sniper perks in Fallout 76 at all, so you can't replicate this. And if my game would stop fucking stuttering for a second, that would be really good. Alrighty. We did miss a couple of super mutants. Oh, it was one of them was a glowing hound. I'm guessing it was the other front patrol highway man or whatever who's actually down there still and ready to kill. Where are you, mate? Show up. We'll see about that, random unnamed super mutant warlord. Okay, with that out of the way, we can take on Gerald now. Okay, he hasn't despawned. I would have thought he might have despawned, because he got stuck in the trees before, and sometimes they just cease to exist. There we go. Snake attack critical for that much damage. I think we got uh, some of our health back, so if we lose a little bit of health, we might um, be able to go back into Nerd Rage, which would be useful for damage output. I also... The only reason I could shot those guys because... They had their health bars showing, so whoops, that might be a little bit exploitative, but still. It is a nice way to see our enemies as well as gauge the um, health bars without having to look at the top of the screen, which I guess is nice. Okay, that super mutant is going nowhere. He can only attack me within a certain radius, and that one's only got a minigun. Question is, can I actually knock him down if I get the splash damage on him? Okay, I'm in a bit of trouble right now. I'm going to use Vats here for a second to get a critical. There we go, that's knocked him down again. And now that oh, basically all of the Super Mutants are dead, now all of them are dead, we can focus on solely Gerald, and then we can probably finish this fight rather easily as he pirouettes and gets impaled by a tree stump. Yeah, he's not having a good day, old Gerald, but too bad. He's a Super Mutant, he has to deal with not having great days. Okay, don't target his face when his face is through the ground. It only leads to missed shots. That's better. I think we'll just crit spam and vats a little bit just so we can get that damage output up because without sneak attack criticals, it takes a while to even drop swan, even with an explosive shotgun. Get a quick reload off in vats as well. Good stuff all around. Now he's struggling to get back up. Once he does, pop a reload, aim down sights again, and basically it's a guaranteed knockdown. If you were doing this with a one-on-one -on -one fight with a really tanky enemy, if you've got yourself Spectrite, you could win. Except if it's Liberty Prime, because I think he's got that invulnerability tag um, attached to him. The only way you can kill him is by dropping the print one on him, which is funny. It's not funny though, because Liberty Prime is is cool. And if you fight the Brotherhood, then you're a bad person. I don't I don't support no railroad synth agenda, that's for sure. Anyways, we've finally killed Gerald after many, many shots of explosive buckshot and many, many sniper knockdowns. Keeping him at bay is a good way to survive the day. Remember that. That's that's your that's your reminder to not 
get into fights with um, giant super mutant behemoths without having a shotgun and the associated perks. Let's move on to something else. Alright, just so we can see how crazy this thing can get, I've just chucked on the never-ending legendary effect as well as made this thing slam fire, so let's see how we do against Todd Bear now. Oh my god, we can still knock things down, even with slam fire. Oh my god, I thought this thing was scary enough with regular pump action fire and then you can knock people down but no you can do it even you can just knock people down like this it'll be an endless rag though okay this is going to be fun let's just push him across the commonwealth there's nothing you can do about this i'll just push him into those shipping crates and get even more splash damage on him i'll just click as fast as i bloody well can there we go that probably was one of the fastest fights with Todd Bear I've ever had, and, um, good riddance, Todd Bear, you piece of shit. <laughs> okay, I think that is about enough for this weapon. You get the point of it. You can make it a little bit crazy. Also, this AMB is very, very bright. I think I turned the adaption off, If and yeah, I, I did. So if I quickly turn that back on, it'll probably go back to a more... Okay, that's a little less crazy, so I probably should have done that earlier. But I can't see during the night if that adaption is set like that, so maybe I need and maybe I need to find a new AMB because something that works with night vision perks would be good. But if you'd like to see this weapon in your game, check out the description. There shall be a link down there. Now this pump action shotgun doesn't do a lot um, of damage or oh, now this pump action shotgun doesn't actually do a lot more than what I've seen before with the pump action shotgun. I think it's basically a reskin, but it is a good reskin at that. And what it brings to the table, I guess, is some nice visual improvements over the other Benelli M3 shotgun, I think it was. This thing definitely looks better for a lot less um, tactical, but still, you can have both of these in your game and have a very good time with pump action shotguns if you like using shotguns in Fallout, and who wouldn't? They're great. Thank you for watching, guys. Okay, it's actually automatic if you have it in slam fire mode. I didn't need to spam the trigger, that just happens.